your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can roll the image, make it flutter. We can change the focus to a soft blur or sharpen it to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit quietly and we will control all that you see and hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television set. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to outer space. Please stand by. We're down here on the second floor now. And pretty much the same type of um, disaster or devastation. As we make our way down this hallway, headed south. We're on the second floor. And this is where the rain has um, come through at. And what we're going to do is, I think we're going to cut the second floor out. And we're going to go down to the first floor and see what we can see. But before we go to the second floor, I mean to the first floor, we'll step off into one of these rooms right here. Lots of debris piled up in the driveway of the parking lot. And we'll see what the scrappers then um, did they do. Right now what we're coming to is an area where the showers or the locker rooms used to be. And I remember um, I had like a lot of uh, people I went to school with, high school with, told me how this was uh, a magnificent structure. Another hole there. Those are all scattered out and about. Outside view. I would jump in the pool, but <laughs> I don't want to take that chance. So but what we'll do is we'll walk around so you can um, get a feel for what this was like. And I remember one of my good friends that I went to school with, he, um, well, even or not, jumped off the diving board and landed the wrong way with his legs open and um, twisted his, um, his nuts, the spermatic cord. some of the pipes and stuff or to get the drains out you know one of the things too about these swimming pools is that they used to have a divider down the middle to divide the boys from the girls males and females Marble. 
you know, the interesting thing too is about all these um, buildings, and I'm keep stressing this, is the architecture. gymnasium you know somebody asked me one time they said um, why did they build a lot of the gyms on the second floor and only explanation that I possibly could think of was that um, basically to give the students something to do during the winter out, you know, during the winter time. And then when this school was built, you know, um, basketball was basically a new sport to the United States. Um, the guy that invented basketball was a white guy, last name Nesmith, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. And now we see how um, March Madness has ended. Of course, we got the divider. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our way out of here. And of course, we still got a little ice melting. Keep going forward. Ooh. Ah, yes, the auditorium. This was the other thing I was looking for too. Was the auditorium. I remember one school I went to. The old Grayling Elementary, um, somebody came out and systematically knocked off all the, the hardware off the seats. And look at that architecture. auditorium or what's left of it anyway <clears throat> oh excuse me and as I stated before if these walls could talk what stories would be told what would be said and where the heating ducts were. The balcony, which is where we just came from the top of. 
And we make our way around through all the remainder of this debris. You know, one thing people always ask me too is, um, why was the auditorium so small? I said, well, you gotta think about it. The reason why the auditoriums were so small was because of, um, there wasn't, you know, it wasn't as densely populated in this area. And from what I understand, this school here, and I'm just going to go off the top of my head, held about um, a thousand students at one point. This will get ready to make our way out. Let's see how deep this is. It's pretty deep. My stick is about three feet tall. And that right there is about three and three. Three feet, three inches deep right there. Now if we go to another point, I'm sure it's gonna be deeper. Yep. And I'm not even touching the bottom. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to make our way out of here. And I'm guessing that this was the main door that a lot of the students used to have to come in through. And we're outside here, and this is the sign that says uh, Finney High School, a Detroit public school. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our way around so you can take a look at what this building actually look like the magnificent structure that was <laughs> and I stress was because I don't see no one investing any money into this building because of the damage due to the weather kind of interesting when I think about the city of Detroit and all these jewels that um, are scattered all throughout the city of Detroit and I'm of the firm belief that a lot of them could be preserved then of course there's that joke of a sign there that says for sale or lease called the Detroit Public Schools and that's a joke within itself our way around. You gotta forgive me for not going all the way through the school because of uh, the simple fact is that I'm a one-man operation. I go in by myself. And we see the street waving me. 